Here we go. We're riding around 64 miles an hour. We got a turn coming up. Slow look, press and roll. We got to make sure we look for these signs. The Chevron is going to indicate it's a sharp left turn. I like that yellow thing. I'm going to look at that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Somebody crashed. You see the dust up? Let's go ahead and rescue another rider using our rescue kit and the training we got from Motorcycle Training Concepts. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay, so he's moving. He's conscious. That means his airway is open. I'm sorry. His, his uh, heart is working. Then we'll hey. your hands, your he... legs. Make sure nothing is oh. out of place. I see. I'll let him do it. Man. Why did you do that? All right, I'll let him do his assessment. He seems to have already done it. It's like his airway is open. He's breathing. He... Circulation is good. Oh, he understands what happened. You're good, man. So his brain is doing fine. Now we just got to look for any major bleeds. Let's go ahead and put this back up here. Ensure your own safety. Stop major bleeds. Quickly assess it. Going out of your system. That is a really interesting turn. Lots of motorcycle. Hey, we got a lot of rescue. We got a lot of smart riders, guys. A lot of smart riders. Love it. Watching till the end. All right. So let's take a look at this. I want to see. Look at that rail. I think that's hopefully to prevent anybody from going underneath it and hitting one of those uh, pieces of wood, which will snap you in half. Uh, they probably understand that this is a dangerous area to do this. Here we go. We're moving through here. So that Chevron, uh, the Chevron's over there. Let's go ahead and circle it so you guys know what I'm talking about. Those Chevrons indicate it is a sharp left turn, and it looks like it continues all the way around. So you got to be very careful with that. <clears throat> So when it comes to corn, you got to look far ahead. So you have to look for signs. Okay. You got to look for the debris on the road. So road surface hazards. And you have to look for your entry point, which is for me, middle, middle, middle. Keep it simple. You got to adjust your speed because you don't know how sharp of a turn it is sometimes because the line of sight is a terrible line of sight. You can't see around a blind turn, but this one you can see kind of far. So you should understand we should be slowing it down because it's a constant. It's a constant turn. Here we go. So there's the dust up. You can see the dust up right there, right after. Okay. So if you had your Cardo Pack Doc Bowl, you could be talking to everybody behind you, talking to him, asking these questions. So the fact that he's able to take his helmet off, very good sign, means his musculoskeletal system at least works in his arms. We don't know about his back. We don't know about any of that stuff. You see rocks there, so he could have easily hit his back. That's why when you get motorcycle jackets, buy yourself a CE Level 2 rated back protector. That little gray foam <clears throat> gray foam that goes in it that comes with the jacket is not protection material that is just a pad you need an actual ce level two back protector so uh right here that works so it means his heart is working it's pumping blood to move the arms okay so we're doing an assessment are you okay yeah boom right there we know his airway is open got some voice out also, his lungs are working. Got some air out with the voice. That's how it works. Okay? So, circulation, airway, breathing. Hey, look at that. We are doing fine right now. Now, what we don't know is if his legs are bleeding out. Now, his arms are exposed because he's not wearing full gear. He does have a chest and back protector from Fox. He's got a helmet, too, so that's good. A uh, backpack maybe absorbs some of the rocks impacting his body. So, you got to be very careful with that. Um... Everything looks fine. So if you suspect that there's any type of bleeding in his, uh, on his legs and you can't see it with our rescue kits, which only got like five left, by the way, but we have nitrile gloves. And what you can do is go down each leg. And if you can feel the moisture and you start to look and you see like a little bit of blood on your hands because it'll seep through the, the jeans because he's not wearing protective gear and it seeps through, you know there's bleeding there and then you can cut. So you don't always have to cut just to see. You can feel it a little bit, and at the same time, you see it, and you feel for any dis deformities, and he's like, ow, that hurts. Okay, cool, injury right there. Let's go ahead and take care of it. That's what you're doing at this point, and right now, it looks like there's no real issues. Then move. Check your hands, your legs. Make sure nothing is oh. out of place. Is he kidding me, man? So he's upset, so he's kind of aware. Yeah. So inside every kit, we have a rescue card. It's an actual card. I don't have my wallet with me, but I have my card in my wallet at all times. But this is going to help you out. Rescue. After a motocross, rescue the rider. So remain calm, ensure your own safety, stop major bleeds, quickly assess severity. So the main thing here is call 911 if it's that bad, okay? But you have to remain calm so you actually know where you're at. Ensure your own safety. If you get hit by another vehicle or you get injured, like this thing 
like burns you or like the person is, is aggravated and starts beating the shit, <laughs> beating you up, you, you just leave. Okay. Ensure your own safety. So you're looking for hazards and wear personal protective equipment because you don't know if they have any bloodborne pathogens or COVID. <clears throat> so wear your helmet too and have that face shield down just in case, especially if it's a stranger. Stop major bleeds. So you can do direct pressure, apply a tourniquet, which we give you two of them in our kits and pack the wound if you need to. So you start putting some of that four by four into that wound to pack it uh, in case you can't put a tourniquet like in the hip or in the shoulder and it's bleeding like crazy. You pack it full of, full of gauze. That way it, it absorbs it. Uh, and then it actually compacts the actual bleeding vessel that's inside. And you want to quickly assess the severity. Head injury, spinal cord injury, shock sy symptoms. Flip this card over. Okay, let's flip it over. Does the rider have any of these symptoms? Head injury, spinal, shock symptoms. The treatment for this is to stop any external bleeding, lay the rider down, monitor any changes, and keep the rider warm. We have uh, an emergency blanket inside of each of our kits. Emergency Mylar blanket. And what that's going to do is keep them warm to allow the blood to just kind of uh, circulate easier. And uh, with shocky symptoms, you can catch uh, hypothermia because the blood shunts to the body and your body just gets really cold. Uh, so it's really good just to have a warm body, okay? Warm body is good. A warm body is good. Uh, the rider needs to go to the hospital immediately if they are experiencing any of those symptoms. That's really true. Head injuries are no bueno. Spinal injuries, obviously, you guys know that one. Uh, but bleeding out and having shock, that's a killer. That kills quite a bit of people. Lots of people. So I like the fact that there's so many smart riders right here helping and rescuing <clears throat> this rider. And then we got a smart truck driver right here. Here we go. He crashed a new motorcycle. That's a no bueno situation. We got pixels everywhere. Oh, going a little too fast. Hey, look at the cruiser rider did better than you. Come on, man. Was that a crash? Okay, if we hit anything, it is a crash. Okay, close calls only matter if you don't touch anything that you're not supposed to touch. So that is considered a crash. Now let's go ahead and go back. What do you think? One, once again, I said orange stage is going to be for corners because you got to pay attention. So what I like to do is look very far ahead. So you got to look for signs, you got to look for debris, and you got to look for your entry. Okay, so now you have to adjust your speed based off of that. So adjust that speed. You might be going too fast like this person. It looks like we might be coming off of an interstate or something and going off into a main road. So we're going at highway speeds, and we got to slow down before this turn, okay? So throttle control, though. When you slow it down, you want to maintain a good throttle. You don't want to be doing this with it, okay? So no jerky movements. You got to make sure you maintain it through the turn so you don't slow down too much or you don't go too fast. And then uh, you got to keep looking, okay? You look first. You look last. You look through all of it. Find that exit. So let's go ahead and see what we did here. So remember, we got to look for uh, debris and signs. So there's that Chevron right above his head. That Chevron sign is going to tell you that you need to be going to that direction, and it's a sharp turn. Very good. We didn't pay attention there. Also, look for other things that other people screwed up on. Look at this side right here. People tend to not make this turn very well, so not good. But yeah, that Chevron is a big indicator that we should be paying attention. So if you're a new rider to driving or riding, Signs are very important. They're very good. Think of it as like a video game UI. Something's popping up. Hey, it's letting you know. Warning, warning, warning. And then uh, you kill that monster or something. I don't know what games you guys play. Anyways, uh, so now let's go ahead and adjust our speed. We didn't do that. We did not do that. A good acronym everybody knows. Oh, that's no bueno. A good acronym that everybody knows is slow, look, press, and roll. Okay? I have a few other tips, but slow, look, press, roll. Pretty easy. Here we go, Ziggs 62. He went round the bend too widely and eventually... I'm teaching class. Straighten the bike. I'm teaching class. Motostars keeps talking. You made me miss it, Motostars. So we dumped the bike. We lost some traction because of the gravel. You know, so if that's on the road, that's kind of what it looks like, but we went off-road. So once again, you got to look far ahead, adjust that speed. You got to maintain good throttle control. Don't be jerky with the movements, and you got to keep looking for that exit. Okay? Pretty simple. He went round the bend too widely and eventually panicked as he straightened the bike. All right, so look at great job looking through the turn. Good job. So let's see what happened here. We forgot the turn of the bike. Now, typically what you see with this is that, you know, there's multiple aspects to actually turning. So like I said, you have to look through the turn. You have to adjust your speed. You actually got to turn the bike. You don't 
there's there's a few things here. Also shifting, so there's a lot going on. So when I see something like this where somebody just forgets to turn, it, it looks like a new rider. Because new riders tend to be in a position where they can only do, let's say, four out of the five things because they're still learning all of it. And that fifth thing was turning, and he didn't do that. But he did the looking, he did all that stuff. It could have been anything. Could have been doing the turning and not looking. Could have been doing the turning and looking and not adjusting the speed. So new riders have this big, massive cognitive overload. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. Look at that. The Fitz Posner's model of motor learning. So right here, this is where every new rider is. If you're a brand new rider and you haven't been riding ever and you're on this channel watching this live stream, by the way, if you guys want to see it Fridays at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, um, you're looking to learn. You're learning, learning, learning. Okay, you're absorbing as much as you can. You're you're expending quite a bit of energy on trying to learn. Okay, you're not when you're in class learning something new. You don't even think about your mortgage. You don't think about your car outside. You might be thinking about your motorcycle, but you're focused on learning, and that's pretty much every learner's mind. Now, when you start to practice it, let's go ahead and make myself bigger so I can point. So when you practice it. You start to develop the habits that is inside your brain. You're starting to really learn that stuff because now you're actually putting it in motion. So think of if you've ever taken an MSF class, total control, whatever, uh, you do that classroom session. The classroom session is here, the cognitive learning. And then you go out into the range and you start to practice it, and that's the associative learning. That's what you're doing. And it feels weird. You're not doing very good. You're, you know, you're trying to master the basic forms and you're refining the skills. So the skills are very rough around the edges and you start to smooth them out so your shifting is very jerky your turning is very jerky but the more you do it it starts to become less jerky and more smooth and then when you start riding for a long time or you start riding and you get more and more and more and more and more experience you start to realize oh i don't have to think about shifting oh i don't have to think about turning really i don't have to think about looking where i need to go i don't even need those those patterns that side of the vehicle just pops out i don't even have to think about it i'm not saying look for the side of the vehicle look for the Make sure you shift. Make sure you rev. You're not even thinking about it. And it says autom uh, autonomous stage. I like to call it automaticity. Okay, so that's a, there's different words for it. But it becomes uh, second nature. This is muscle memory at this point. That's muscle memory. When you get to this point, you can now start adding in strategy. Like a lot of strategy. And by strategy, what I mean by that, let's go ahead and make myself a little bit smaller. Okay, then you start looking for the best position. You're looking for hazards specifically because you're not thinking about... Put it back on the screen. You're not look, You're looking for hazards. You're not really focused on shifting and you're adapting. Put it back on the, put it back on the screen. Navigate around those threats. So that's going to be that swerve and that's going to become naturally. So here's the... Plan your ride. Go back and pause it if you need to. All right, here we go. Guys, if you like this kind of stuff, we do this every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time live. So make sure you check that out. But if you want to check out some other things like this video right here or this video right here, please do so. It supports the channel. Click that like button, by the way. Check into class. Anyways, I'll be seeing you around.